Welcome to another live stream. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, yes, we're good. Just want to make sure we're good. We're good? We're good. Okay. Well, I do say we shall have a stream right now. We shall have an excellent stream. We shall stream it up. Stream it up good. That's right. Stream it around. Mix it around until it's really good. And then, and then have some. Okay, so what I'm working on today is um, health bars. That's right. So I just got these health bars going. Um, I got some two-dimensional health bars that overlay above the voxel world. They can't integrate themselves. I can't integrate two-dimensional stuff into the voxel world currently. So this is just an overlay. So you can tell like it's above, um, it's above other stuff. But what is functional about it is that it shows a red one for enemies and green ones for people on your team. So there's all. What's next to do is I want to try doing a, a somewhat of a like a a circular health bar that sits on the ground. So it's actually part of the three dimensional voxel world world, and uh, that slowly I don't know how the heck I would actually make it drain like how, how you would show it. Shoot, maybe I'll work on some other things besides that first. I've got some other high priority items to work on. For example. When I just killed that guy, he turned he's his red health bar didn't turn to green. It should be should be green. He should be on the same team as I. Let's try and debug that. Yo, Teeks. Hey man. How are you doing? It's been a while since we chatted. So we'll set up some breakpoints here. Like, I want to know what... I think that's uh, player number two or something. Doing fine, kind of? Kind of fine? You're ill. Oh, man. I hear you. I know that feeling when you're ill. Well, I hope you get better soon. Glad to hear you're fine in general, though. I want to set some breakpoints here. This is when an entity dies and becomes a wraith. Their team becomes that of the person that killed them. So, or it should be. So let's check out what's up with that. Like, is something wrong here? Something be wrong here! And... Uh, I need to know what entity ID. I think it's entity ID 2 because we want a breakpoint here. In fact, let's just set a breakpoint there. And check it out. I got swizzled up this um, sweet thing so when it loads up. Uh... That's weird. When it loads up LLDB, it's got it all set up for me now. That's pretty cool. Swarmonian's going strong. Cool, man. Right on. Is the major mechanic something you can share or is it a secret? If it's not a secret, I'd love to hear about it. So we got a break point there. Yeah, let's just, uh, well, we can try and guess. So there's one more thing in tick health bar. We want to set another break point here, but only only if entities ID, I think this is entity two that we're trying to catch here. We'll just make some code right there and set a breakpoint there too. All right, now we go down to this LLDB window and run it. We've got two breakpoints. Oh, we actually want to delete this breakpoint right here. Shoot. I think it's called, I think the command is breakpoint clear. Oh, I didn't hit it. Oh. What? Should have. Oh, there it goes. It hit something. Probably this one. Yeah, okay, it's hit that breakpoint.
A group of sac sacrificial tables? Oh, sweet! You feed your particles to it? Receptacles. Cool. Awesome. For those of you guys on YouTube, um, Teeks is making his own game called Swarmonian Explorer. And it's got all these particles and cool lighting effects and some, I think there's some chemistry science kind of behind it, but it's also kind of a game, right? Or I mean, isn't, isn't there science behind it? I can't, I can't remember. But it's on, it's on Steam. You can find it on Steam. He's got a, don't you have it, is it already for sale on Steam or do you have a wish, wish list page for it? Oh, that's right, your other game. Okay. With the science. That's right. Yeah. So it's kind of like a puzzly particle game. There's puzzles. That much I remember. Remember accurately. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. So you don't have your page yet on Steam. Uh, so I was, so I, was, I was thinking of your other game. Um, and you have a subreddit since today. Cool, man. Congrats. You, you've entered the world of subreddit. I think it's breakpoint clear. Huh. Oh, it's breakpoint delete. Breakpoint delete too. Okay, I'm still learning this whole command line LLDB thing, but the whole goal is to get it to be get to be faster. So I'm gonna continue debugging. You know what I need to do is get some kind of LLDB color scheme going. All right, so we've resumed play. I want to kill him. Throw some grenades. You're stuck. You're stuck, man. There we go. Horrible frame rate here. More optimizations to do. Damn, what is really... What's What just happened? Oh. Did we hit a breakpoint? Oh, we hit a breakpoint. Okay. The mega bombs, huh? No, it just hit the breakpoint, and that's that's one limitation of debugging in the command line I've found so far is that when it hits a breakpoint, it's not like it goes back to the command line. You have to just kind of know that it hit a breakpoint and then all tab back in. So I wish that was better. Wish I could maybe there's some way I could figure that out. Like when the breakpoint activates, somehow does something. Execute some commands. The Mega Bomb! Show me the Mega Bomb! Nice, man. Mechanics working. Good to hear. Cool, man. I'm excited for you. Sarmonian Explorer, getting close to being finished. Okay, so that... Yeah, somebody died. Let's see what entity died. Eight. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's uh, you can always make your art better. Just iterate. It's like just like programming, only <laughs> only it's not programming. It's art. It's iterating art. 
300 issues? Whoa. Gosh, I wonder how many... Gosh, I have so many unresolved issues still to this day for Songbringer. Like, so much. When it gets to the... Like, God, that project was a big project. So many things I still wanted to do. And so many bugs that were, all, like, not that important. But I wish I could have fixed them. But you only have so much time to work on one game. you got to work on another game at some point. Okay, so this is not the entity that we wanted to see, but, but, we can print the entity's collision category. All right, there we go. So the team bits are the far right ones. You can see it's team eight currently. Cool, man. Yeah, early access. I know exactly what that's like. Every issue you resolve, there's two more you put in. Oh, God. Oh, man, those days. I have got to figure out. Tell me if you have figured out how to manage your own stress levels. Have you been able to manage your own stress levels during this process of bug fixing towards the end of a project? I found that I got so stressed out releasing Songbringer that I really had, I would like literally made myself sick. One and a half month early access phase. Cool. So that said, I'm trying to figure out ways to be more uh, chill for my next game release. Like somehow handle the flood storm of bugs and features left to finish and stress and turn that all into some kind of just positive experience. That's what my goal is for Wraithbinder. Okay, let's step. We got the killer. All right, so we're going to clear out all teams. And let's print the collision category again. Great, so those are all zero now. And once again, I was talking about these bits right here, these far right ones. And that bit right there is indicating that we are a team. Uh, team 8. Oh, and I've got some little utility. This, oh. Shoot, I was many, meaning to be running this the entire time, but somehow my script didn't work to start it, but there we go. Now you can see all the key, keys I press in the bottom left corner. When you're stressed, you just do a new level? Oh, that's cool. That's a good way to handle it. Yeah, I'm trying to show the keys so I'm pressing because so you can see what I'm doing in Vim. Because Vim is like, you know, it can be, cra it can be crazy um, esoteric. All right, so now we're going to set the bit for collision category all teams and the collisions killer collision category. So let's set, let's do the next step there and then print E dot collision category again. Great. We switched that guy's team bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete the breakpoint at this line. I still got to figure out. Oops. So I got some. I got some keyboard shortcuts and or Vim shortcuts created for this whole LLDB debugging, but there's some left to do, like that, that one. Toggling a breakpoint on the current line when I already have the debugger open. Currently my breakpoint toggle function opens the opens the uh, window down there and sets a breakpoint. So I need to figure out how to make it so if it already has the window open, it just sets a breakpoint. That's just pretty simple. Just a combination of Vim script and hammer spoon and boom. Okay, so now we should be able to let this run because I've got another breakpoint when it the the guy that I'm trying to kill here when he dies. Okay, now it's getting in here. We gotta make sure he dies before I die. Die. Oh no. Run away. Oh no. There, he died. Why didn't it hit the breakpoint? 
Oh. Oh wait, he's green this time. Oh, this is so weird. Oh wait, hold on. You're you're there. You're there. Huh. All I'm trying to do is figure out why. Okay, let's just quit the debug. I'm trying to figure out why the when the entity dies, some of them don't turn, change to green. The green color represents your team, and it's not doing that for some of these guys. So, okay, simple way to do this. Let's um, make sure there's only one bot. That'll simplify this a lot. So, create player. Got a little bit of this here. Remove the player somewhere convenient. Actually, we'll just do it like this. If index is not equal to zero or and index is not equal to one, then return. So that should give us only me and the other player. Oh, what? Hmm. Is there something running here? What is MD Worker, dude? What is it trying to back up again? I knew my system's running. So oh god, I can't wait to get a new laptop. When I'm worrying about five percent of my CPU, it's just like, ugh, god, it's so hard to try and do a live stream and and code at the same time with this laptop. What heck? What? What? What happened to that code I just wrote? Oh, God. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let's run it and make sure that up here, there is the player that we're looking for. Cool, that's the guy. All right, and if I run way over this way, I shouldn't see anyone over here. Cool, there's nobody over here. There's nobody in the whole rest of the arena. You know what, I think this Showing my keystrokes is also adding some kind of stress to the system. Great, we've only got two players. Now, when somebody dies, we'll set a breakpoint in the health system when that happens. Uh... Wait, hold on. Render component. Oh, um, there. Tick health bar. If Andy's ID is to create player. Oh man, wish this was going faster. Index. Okay, so the southwest quadrant is index one, but id. Oh, the, yeah, the id's one and, and two. That should be two. Uh, 
Okay, let's just ignore whatever. We'll just set a breakpoint and tick health bar when the entity, once the entity dies. Okay, so we're setting a breakpoint here. Oh, shoot. Wrong keystroke. Oh, I could close Xcode. Let's get rid of Xcode. Let's do all debugging in the command line today. That will help a little bit. Okay, now. Great. When somebody dies, we hit that breakpoint. Okay, now we just got to go kill the other player. Turn them into a wraith. And then set a breakpoint inside tick health bar to figure out why he wasn't turning green. Gosh, what if he turns green while... Oh, shoot. I didn't even test that. Can I hit it? Yeah, I can. I can press the 2 key. There. Oh, he died. Why didn't he hit the breakpoint? And he's, he turned green, too. Damn. Oh, this is so weird. Oh, I think because I didn't run it from here. Okay. Man, my computer's lagging so much I can barely tell when I swing as this sword. But oh well! I'm just complaining. Come back here. Face the music. I'm guessing I killed him. Great, killed him. Okay. So now we need breakpoint in tick health bar actually let's step through Cool. It set the right team. It's got the right breakpoints. So let's continue. Stopping here. For which entity? This is the me. Okay, so let's go continue. Now this should be... Okay, great. That's the other player, too. Okay. Now, either something's wrong with this same team calculation. Or something like that. So let's go to the next line. And we're going to step in. Um, step in is S. What's the show all locals? FRV? Okay, so this is that. RHS is that, so step out. Finish. Step in. Now we're stepping into another and. This time we got same thing. Step out. Step in. 
No word to has any. Show all the locals. This is one. And the bits that we're trying to see is also one. Okay, I think it worked fine, actually. Right, your collision uh, category and all teams, and my collision uh, category all teams. That's, uh. Yeah, that's totally fine. Why is K your movement key? Um. J, I'm using Vim, so Vim's natural uh, movement keys are J, K, H, and L. And I actually have some plugins for um, for Chrome that actually do the same thing. So when I press J and K inside Chrome, it, it uh, does that, unless I'm inside a text box, right? I can, press, I can press J, K all I want down here in this text box, and it actually uses it as input. But if I'm not part of it, that I can also use that Vim movement keys kind of everywhere else because it's what's great about Vim movement keys with the JK the H and the L is that they're all in the home row and they're all with your right hand and they're all you don't have to ever move your hand that's the that's the benefit of it you get a lot less repetitive stress on your your hands that's the reason I switched to Vim actually in the first place because I had um, a another bout this is like the fifth time in my life having a bout of uh what's the uh, tendonitis the opposite of carpal tunnel i've had carpal tunnel before i've had tendonitis many times uh but yeah that's why i switched to vim and i haven't had tendonitis since i switched to vim so hopefully this does have something to do with it um gosh i was trying to find that bug but i couldn't find it Okay, let's just switch. Let's switch to the next topic. I'm just gonna ignore the, this fact that there is a bug, perhaps a bug in this system, or perhaps it was something like a one of the files wasn't compiled. Okay, let's put all the players back in. Move on to the next topic. I wanted to try out some three-dimensional rings underneath the player that acted like health bars. Let's give that a shot. I, would th I think inside refresh model, let's clear out Vim, get all these old windows closed. We'll go to refresh model. This is when a model needs to be refreshed. Basically the model's either been rotated, it's moved its position in 3D space, uh, it's changed to a different animation. There's several different reasons why a model would need to be re uh, refreshed. But inside here I added a little bit of code that adds in another model. And that was just roll blah blah idle. Which I don't, do I still have that as a model? These roles? I don't think so. Yeah, I deleted it. Okay, well, we'll, do, we'll make a new one. So I'm trying to think how, how wide is this here? This is x20, this is x like 32, this is about 12. So if I did a ring that was say 14 to 16 wide, let's start with 14. That would be a, a circle surround, like a reticle or something like that underneath this player here. Reticle, is that the word? 
Oh wait, no reticle. Right, no, that's not it. It's not like the fine lines on an optical device. I'm just thinking. It kind of is a reticle. Whatever. We're calling it reticle. A border, yeah, kind of like a border. An indicator, uh, gosh, I'm just going to call it reticle for now. I don't think this is going to animate. Put a zero on it anyways, though. Okay, let's just make the friend first. All right, so we need to first of all, let's make this um, seventeen by seventeen by one. I'm using an odd number there so that it can actually be centered perfectly with pixels. We'll create a sphere. There's a radius of fourteen. Fifteen. There we go. And we'll make it pure white. Or close well, I think that's white. Pure white, there we go. Okay, and now we delete sphere radius 13. There we go, now we've just got a simple circle. Okay, so we're gonna call that reticle friend. And, um, and then we're gonna copy reticle friend to reticle enemy, or how about foe? Okay, and now we can add in another model on top of this. If this entity has a role, oh gosh, I need to know if this is a friend or a foe easier. Yeah, highlight indicator. Yeah, I guess indicator is probably the better word. Let's just get started here with reticle friend and What's wrong with this? Oh, well, that's right. There's no model constructor like that anymore. Um We need to cache both of them first. Yeah, that's exactly why I uh, made two files. Right, exactly. That's kind of I had that intention. Thanks though. Thanks for the reminder there. Yeah, that was totally the point. Yeah, I have two two of these. So for color bind players, um, the reticle that's a, a a foe will be a different shape, so that it, even if it's you know a color blind player can tell the difference between just you know those two by sight rather than having them be green or red only being the only difference. Uh, okay, so this is a new way we create models now. 
Um, we need a model config and a model. And then we get the model. All right, there we just loop over the voxels, set the color. Expand the rect. You gave up on colorblind support? Yeah. Oh, I know, yeah, with that with your game. I get that. You got a lot of color matching going on. Okay, now we've got that. Oh, we also need, we haven't set a color yet for this. So it'll just be a white ring underneath the player for now. <laughs> but let's see what it looks like to start with. Is it even in the right place? Okay, it is. Oh, but it's Z. We need to have an offset for that, actually. We'll start with an offset of 1 on the Z axis. What? Now it's disappeared. Whoa, it's like way below now. Ah, oh, that was weird. What, what the heck? What? What happened here again? Oh, this happened twice today on today's stream. I like wrote some code. It unwrote the code for me. And then didn't put it anywhere in my undo buffers. What trickery is this? Well, I do say I've been tricked by my own compiler. My own Vim command line editor. Is doing crazy things today. Making me feel like a crazy man. I don't understand what's going on. It's confusing me. I'm pissed off about it. Okay, what's up? Why, why when I add one to the Z, does it push it all the way down like that? What if we had like 15 to the Z? Here we go, it's everybody's favorite time. It's the WTF time. This is where you just type type in random numbers and see what happens. What you gonna get? Well, I push it down even farther. I saw it way down there in the ground.
Anchor zero. Oh, it might have to be has something to do with the anchor. No, that would have to do that would have to do with the. Okay, yeah. Now it's up too high. Oh, this is so weird. Why, when I give it a negative offset, is it doing it this way? I guess it has something to do with the way the voxels are being added to the existing voxels of the player's model. So maybe it's a janky way to go about it, adding a model to another model. Whoa, what? This is negative one and it's all up in his head? Oh, God. All right. Can't take it right now. Let's start with making a simpler way to determine the player's team. Switching tasks right now. Feeling a little bit frustrated with, with the code right now. So an int will now have a new function, a new method. Oh, we've already got it. Get team. And is set max teams being called? Yeah, cool. We got that up set right. Okay, cool. We've got the appropriate amount of max teams. We've got an int get team function already. So we don't need to do it this complicated. We can just say same team equals e dot get team equals current player dot get team. That makes it green or red. And we'll do the same thing for what uh where was I? It's also here in render system, I think. There we go. Okay. Color. Oh no, this is the same code. We got that, we got this. We'll make this more of a one liner. So now we've got same team and color. Also a one liner. We just multiply all of the voxels colors by that color, whether it's green or red. Okay. So hopefully that indicator now is just green or red.
I can see it. Gosh, that offset is so weird. So the benefit of having it like an indicator that's part of the voxel world, it's 3D. The benefit there is that when I hide behind something like this, you can't see. <laughs> you couldn't see the team. Oh, God. You're not supposed to be able to see the team at all or that indicator at all when i standing behind something. But Okay, and we can also make it so. Uh, should I tra take off? Let's let, let's try this without the health bar always on. What's up, Dead Hand McTarnahan? Code never lies. Of course it is. Of course it is. That's what's so frustrating about it. It's doing exactly what it should. The problem is I don't know why it is. What's up, Diamond Killer? What's up both y'all? So let's see what that's like where, okay, so now I don't have a permanent health bar on. Okay, his health bar is not showing up. Oh, there it is. It's just fading too fast. Okay, that kind of looks weird. How did it fade it's that fast? Hmm. So we'll keep that always on for now. It would be really nice if I could figure out what's up with that offset. So I'm adding in an offset. Oh, that. Ah, <sighs> uh, I do feel like there's so many, so many, a lot of better uses of my time than trying to figure out this particular bug right now. So let's go ahead and focus on some other fun stuff. I'd like to go create an item that I can pick up so that I can actually pick up the bombs or the grenades rather than just always having grenades. Okay, so let's check that in. Oh, wait, what if the team indicator was... All right, man. Yeah, okay, this is good. We'll create an item that you can pick up. So... trying to think of how we'll do well I think the way the best way to put this into the data is like with an extra string 
or an extra integer. Somehow, okay, well, somehow we need to get, first we need to give, have like an item. Uh, in the data so we'll copy something it's like it's like the teleport copy the teleport to or we just want to do I want to create a generic item data or do I want to actually have yeah I guess it should be a, every item should have its own um, Yeah, data file. Okay, we'll do it like that. So the grenades item is its own data file called item grenades. That does seem like the right thing to do. Okay, and then let's go create the data for item grenades. Oh, I just realized that the teleport, oops, is a little bit small on the Y. There we go. That'll make that a little bit smoother when you step on teleports. All right, so grenade. Okay, I guess we can use whatever teleport A is for now for its for its item position flags. We don't need that category building extra. Okay, so here's the point part where I decide how to put into the data that this is an item that grants you grenades. I really think this is as simple as this. Just call it creating a new um, a new variable inside a collision component called item or something like that, and then item grenades or item grenade. Grenades, that's fine. Okay, yeah, we'll do it this way. This sounds right. So that means collision component uh, is going to have a new item. And really, uh, I think I actually uh, this is going to boil down to an ability. We've got these abilities. Yeah, okay, that'll work. So I guess this does need to be item grenade. And then inside collision component, we've got an ability type item. And we can forward declare ability types. And let's confirm that ability is an integer, not an unsigned. Yeah, it's an int. OK, good. Great. Now we can parse item when the collision component loads if it has such a piece of data. So we can just. Pick up the string item. If it's not empty, then we set our item 
to words look up words see abilities and uh, ability is uh, just s yeah it's going to complain because it's not actually an ability type yeah, ability type. So we just need to cast that or construct that as like an ability type like this. Okay. Good then. Currently, I've got it so the move system is what triggers a teleport. So if object.collision dot item, that, oh, that also means that abilities, oh good, we've got ability none is zero, great. That's perfect. Because item will start at zero. Oh, does it? Shoot. Collision component dot h, we do, oops, dot cpp does in fact need to set its item to be C ability none. Let's be pragmatic about it, yeah. Okay, so we got we're picking up the item. We're going to destroy the current entity. After a delay. All right, Teeks, see you. Have a nice day yourself. All right, so we, we need to destroy the item. We also need to grant the item to the player that's picking it up. So right now in set roll, I've got um, grenade just set to ability three. This is e dot input dot ability three equals obj dot collision dot item, and I think that's all we need to do. Is there anything else that needs to be done for when an entity sets up new abilities? No, they're just part of the input system. Okay, cool. Bedtime. It's midnight. All right, man, sleep well, get better, talk to you later. Really, we should be finding an empty index for abilities. How about that? Input component, does it list how many uh, abilities we can possibly have? See how abilities, yeah. For in i equals zero, i is less than c uh, input c num ability. Oh, that's just c num abilities. Okay. So we loop over all the abilities if e dot input dot ability i equals c ability none, then we can pick it up. And we can set that we picked it up. 
we can break from this loop. And now we know if we picked it up or not, so we can say if picked up, then delete the entity. Or we could just put this code inside here. Do that. All right, so there we're setting the items ability thing to whatever we can. And then destroying the entity. Whoa. So the next thing we need to do is um, uh, create these grenade item entities in system. We'll go to systems. Actually, we need to go to create overworld entity. And um, we'll find the place where we're creating these item pathways. Here they are. Items with 90 degree pathway. This is it. We've got a marker there, but we also want to create a grenades item. I think these are, there's more too. Let's, set, let's create some here too. So you pick up grenades like everywhere. Oh, we might as well make it look like a grenade too. I think I've got just grenade A0. Okay. Do that. So item grenades. We'll use the grenade. And we might as well have some um swirly particle systems or something. Um, uh, how did I do the swirly particle systems again? Particle kind, um, was it cone or cylinder? Go to particles.h, figure that out. Kind, random, smoke, waterfall, river, rain, stars. Spiral, that's it, spiral. There's also the solar system and disk. But I was thinking of spiral, and then we need the min radius, max radius, and all that. Oh, and that's loaded from render component. Yeah, okay, that's just radius, okay. Also, we've got color, okay. So in grenades, we can, we got the color, but we want the radius, oh, and this is a kind spiral, radius, um, at the bottom, 10 um, at the middle, 50 and above 100, 80, shoot, I don't know. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so let's run to one of those spots. Here's one. Nothing here. Maybe that's not one of them. Nothing here either. Oh, 
Ja. Did I do that? Oh, it's item grenades. Okay, let's start this out. I'm gonna press the G key, and that will launch a grenade if I have them. Um, and then I'll go and pick up some grenades and see if I can launch them. And then that's gonna be about it for this stream. Okay, good. So I'm pressing the G key and nothing's happening. Now we go, yes, cool, we've got some grenades. A really slow particle system. Oh, cool. Looks like we picked it up. And I can throw grenades. Cool. It worked. How awesome is that? Right on. Okay, so during this stream, we've got some indicators for players, which are, there's a lot of little issues with those. We also can pick up items. That's really great. Okay, well, I do got to get going now. It's about that time of the day. Yeah, thanks, brother. So I'm going to close this stream down, and we'll catch you guys next time. It's been a fruitful, fruitful live stream. So uh, as always, appreciate y'all, and we'll catch you next time.